Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump told somebody to move some boxes. Allegedly, reports the Washington Post. Washington Post Mar-a-Lago witness told the Federal Bureau of Investigation that boxes were moved at Trump's direction. Wow! And now you have everyone within the Democratic Party and media saying he's going to get indicted soon. Why? Because he told somebody to move boxes, according to the Washington Post. After Congress wanted those boxes, or the National Archives demanded those records, the problem is they already have the information pertaining to the classified data. They know that he removed the documents. They already have everything they need to indict, but they will not because he's a former president with the power to declassify anything. And they have no clue. They cannot prove in a court of law that he didn't declassify the documents in question. So they have nothing on Trump. They are so desperate. They are so desperate. Hit subscribe to this channel, ladies and gentlemen, to my Super Chat. I cannot do this without you, ladies and gentlemen. Your, your support via Super Chat is greatly appreciated. If you want to talk about this, the economy, uh, the Durham Probe Special Counsel, anything uh, within reason via Super Chat, your support would be greatly appreciated. Eric, everybody here, Toy Mafia, Hedy, hello. Everybody here, thank you so very, very much. Now, if you look, ladies and gentlemen, they're trying to find intent. They're trying to find an organized effort. Of, for tr They're trying to say with this absurd, sad story, hello, Anomalous. They're trying to say that Trump knew that he had classified data that shouldn't be outside of the U.S. government, and he ordered employees to move that data. Now, we have no clue if this is accurate. It's reported by the Washington Post. And it's the recollection or the uh, statement of an employee, former employee. And so all you need is a pretext to get into this hysterical um like frenzied fit of apoplectic hysteria pertaining to Trump all they need is a pretext all they need is some kind of reason to be suspicious of Trump somebody said a former employee said that Trump so first you would need the employee to back up the statement. Then you would need the R Washington Post, well, to verify the employee's statement, but that's impossible because anyone can make anything up. We know that from the Steele dossier trial, day tr uh, the, the Steele dossier source trial, day two. So we know that they can use a completely fabricated dossier to go after Trump. And they can just, they, they can, all they needed is a pretext. So here we have, on, on, on this channel, you have a short, two shorts of President Obama and also of uh, James Comey exonerating Trump, saying, well, you know what? There's classified, and then there's classified. President Obama says that. And then Comey says, well, you know, Clinton did break the law, and it's his words. Those are his words, not my words. Clinton did break the law, but no reasonable prosecutor would indict. Okay? No reasonable prosecutor would indict. And so, Big H, hello. High Tones, hello. Law 252258, hello. So, we have here presidential records found Right in Clinton's sock drawer, okay? This is the Washington Times. When they're not siphoning out classified data onto servers outside the U.S. government, the Clintons are keeping classified data in sock drawers. Judge ruling gives precedent to Trump team, okay? A 2012 case... Denying access to White House audio tapes kept in former President Bill Clinton's sock drawer 
after he left, left office could help Trump legal team in battle to retrieve records that the Bureau t- uh, seized from Mar-a-Lago this month. Mm. He had classified data. <laughs> and there you go. It was in a sock drawer. So, I mean, again, there's like nuance here and there. And um, there's like nuance here and there. You can say, oh, well, uh, you know, um, that was to write a book and they were on tape. So what? So what? What does that even mean? It was right next to his underwear, for goodness sakes. He was, it was right next to his underwear. Oh, Lord. And so you have a situation where um, Bill Clinton literally has classified data Bill Clinton literally has classified data um, in a sock drawer. Of course, media and Democrats don't care. Now, we can go down the list. Clinton's server was unencrypted for three months. She had classified data on unencrypted servers. What do you think happened to that information? These are the people who claim to care so much about classified data. And absolutely, it's called whataboutism. You should always respond to any attempt by the Democratic Party to point a finger at Trump with whataboutism. It's called hypocrisy. It used to be called, oh, pointing out hypocrisy. Now it's whataboutism. You have a situation where Clinton was actually siphoning classified data at one point onto unencrypted servers, okay? At one point onto unencrypted servers. And that was okay. So you have a sock drawer, you have unencrypted servers. I mean... Basically, everything's fine when it comes to Democrats and classified data. Fact check. Archives agency transferred 30 million unclassified records to Chicago. Why were they transferred to Chicago? Why not just to D.C. where the National Archives are at? Why Chicago? So, 30 million unclassified. How do you have 30 million unclassified documents? How is that even possible? But then you have the U.S. But Obama did nothing of the sort. Oh, really? The National Archives gained custody. Oh, Lord. In 2017. Um, gained custody of 30 million. How long did it take the National? How much you want to bet the National Archives didn't read 30 million pages? What was the process of, of of declassifying or finding out 30 million? How do you have 30 million pages? What does that even mean? <clears throat> what does that even mean? 30 million unclassified documents? How do you read 30 million unclassified documents? How does that happen? How does that happen? And so you have 30 million unclassified. Now, Obama doesn't have custody of his administration's records. Then why is it in Chicago? Why are are the records uh, assume uh, the archives agency said that they assumed exclusive legal and physical custody, then why do they have a facility in Chicago? A facility in in Chicago is okay, but not in Mar-a-Lago. Okay, that sounds good. Because the National Archives says so, you know. The National Archives says so, so that's that's the main point. Thank you, High Tones. Thank you, Hetty. Everybody here, thank you. And so it's just so absurd, like the whole thing, you have to be stupid to just believe this nonsense. 
how do you like what was the process i would love to ask a basic question because you have all this grandstanding absolutely president obama did not have any classified data he went he went above and beyond to be uh to abide by the rules well then who read the 30 million documents can we actually like uh send them to congress so they could testify and and uh or or part of the part of an investigation by republicans in congress to see if president obama followed all the because apparently the national archives is like very very oh my god they're so important to national security where were the national archives when clinton well clinton was secretary of state she just, she just happened to transfer classified and top secret intelligence onto unencrypted servers but that's okay i guess or servers that were once unencrypted. Steppenwolf! Steven Seagal, you shook me all night long. <laughs> See you. Steppenwolf, thank you! Steppenwolf, thank you so very, very much. Greatly appreciated. I didn't see the... I didn't see the... Uh, I did not see the first... Um, apparently there was... Oh, this is it. Steppenwolf, thank you so much. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated, Steppenwolf. I can't do this without you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Steppenwolf. Greatly appreciated. I hope all is well. Thank you for, for being on the second live stream also. Experts say uh, Obama followed procedure, has limited access. Oh, the experts say that? What do the experts say about um, how long it took to read 30 million unclassified documents a day? How long does it take you to read a book? How long does it take you to read a 300-page book? Okay. A week? Two days? Two, three days? One day? A month? How about a 30-million-page book? Hmm? Would you get caught and immersed in, you know, reading a wonderful tale called President Obama's uh, unclassified uh, presidential records? <clears throat> we're supposed to believe 30 million pages were read? Steppenwolf, thank you so much. As always, to my super chat, I cannot do this without you. Pony Soldier, hello. And then you, I love this. I love this. This, it, it's, they, they, they just, while Obama doesn't have personal, uh, personally have his presidential records, right? He can look at them at the archives agency controlled facility under, under the supervision of archivists. Oh, really? Did those archivists read 30 million pages? How about they didn't? That's not humanly possible within the span of a year, or even four years five years 30 million pages our rating false the truth coming to 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 bite trump in the rear end again based on our research we rate false the claim that obama took 33 million dollars many of which were classified how do you know that like, how is it even possible to get 30 million unclassified documents? What does that even mean? The archives uh, agency gained custody. Uh, and but, but part of it was supposed to be, they, they were all supposed to be online and digitized. So why are they not, why are they not online? So that's another thing that's like, just, it transferred 30 million unclassified records to a facility in Chicago and kept the Obama administration classified records at a facility in the Washington, D.C. Obama had no say in the process. How about he had all the say in the process? How about all of this is nonsense? How about you'd have to be a complete imbecile and the most gullible person on the planet to believe 30 million documents were unclassified? Because you have 30 million and then the classified records at a facility. Okay. Um, what were the 30 million documents about? What were they about? 
and why can't we see them? Because we can't. Because they're not online. They're supposed to be online and digital now. <clears throat> is that following? Is that is, uh, is President Obama following the National Archives um, protocols? And by the way, when was the last time the National Archives went after a president? Ed from Queens. Shorts are doing great. Give us a retail short. Your opinion. Um, I mean, regarding tomorrow's uh, inflation numbers, um, I mean, the producer price index went up. I can't imagine inflation ticking downwards, but if it if it did, it's probably a lie. Inflation at 8 to 9% with oil prices going back up. So oil prices are going back up. So Steppenwolf, thank you so much. I can't do this without you, everybody. Steppenwolf, thank you so much. So Ed from Queens, um, you look and it's like, if in, if the producer price index is going up and then tomorrow it's up, up higher than expected and then tomorrow you have uh, the inflation numbers and they're supposed to be, um, I mean, they're almost certainly going to be going back up. I mean, they're almost certainly up. Inflation has gone up, almost certainly not down. But Ed from Queens, probably inflation is going to go up. Steppenwolf, thank you. But I mean, here you have 30 million documents and they're worried about, they're worried about 15 boxes. Then you had um, you can see this. A few days later, the Bureau sent a note saying, thank you, yours truly, Chief of Counterintelligence and Export Control. Okay, so there you go. Thank you, yours truly. So this is the Wall Street Journal. The, the FBI sent Trump a thank you note. They already knew what he had. Laughing dog! Thank you, sir! Laughing dog! Great work, Mr. Goodman. Thank you, laughing dog. Denise! Denise Graydon, thank you! Laughing dog, thank you so very, very much. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Denise Graydon, thank you. Thank you so very much. I can't do this without you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Denise and Laughing Dog and Steppenwolf and everybody here, Ed from Queens, you have 30 million documents sent to Chicago. They're all unclassified, which is very bizarre to me. Makes no sense at all. We can't see them, but they followed strict protocol from the National Archives. Okay, then why can't we see them? Where, wh why can't we see it's 2022? President Obama left office in 2017. It's been going on six years now. Why can't we see even one of the 30 million unclassified documents? Denise, laughing dog, thank you. Steppenwolf, Ed, thank you. We have... Yet to see even one document of the 30 million unclassified documents. But don't worry, they all meet the National Archives and the all um, wonderful liberal Democrat archivists' um, uh, protocols. They're so, it's like this this is like the Hall Monitor political party from you know where. These are all hall monitors. You're not following the rules. Well, you have unencrypted servers with top secret intel. Well, 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 Director Comey said, Director Comey said that no reasonable prosecutor would indict, but you're not following the rules. Like, okay, hall monitor. <laughs> These are the hall monitors who, like, allow a semi-truck to go through the, the locker hall. But then you, you get your, you, you open your locker during class, like, for a second. It's like, oh my god! SEAL Team 6, how dare you? <laughs> the 
Um. I mean, it's unbelievable. Laughing Dog Denise, thank you so very much again. Michael Cohen, uh, like almost certainly lying about a great deal. The only time he actually told the truth uh, was when he was saying that he wasn't a part of the Steele dossier, which was true. He wasn't. Producer price index. Wholesale prices rose 0.4% in September. So, 0.4%, higher than expected. It's going to be very difficult for me that to believe that inflation isn't worse than they than they say. So, <clears throat> you have a situation where you have a situation where. Yeah, but you know, ladies and gentlemen, it's not about trusting. Like, here's the thing with the word trust. They don't trust, uh, you know, Tulsi or Trump or this or that. It's like, Tulsi Gabbard, you know where she she's very likely more liberal than a lot of Republicans. Okay, that's you. you already know this. You don't have to trust anything. You already know, ladies and gentlemen, we already know. The great thing is that she basically said she did say that that the democratic party uh was a group or cabal of of uh warmongers elite elitist warmongers that's basically pretty good now what's there not to trust you think she's going to become a democrat again no you think she'd vote for an impeachment of trump i don't think so because she she knows how these despicable games are being played um there's no really like this is the thing the word trust should never be used in politics nobody can tr be trusted other than the only way to actually accept anyone or believe anyone is through their actions we know that trump had a great economy we know he had a great foreign policy we know that he was accused of things he didn't do we know that the people who accused him of things he didn't do are presiding over a recession possible economic depression, stock market crash, and a complete failure in Europe, where we face possible Armageddon. We know the actions of one political side are going to cause them to lose Congress miserably, the House and Senate. We know that Trump will run again, and because he's a great president, is he perfect? As, is he perfect? No. But is, it, is, is mashed potato brains Joe perfect? No. I think the issue of trust, I think Steppenwolf brought up a great point. Um, it, it's not a matter of, Miguel! Miguel Char, thank you so very much. You are amazing. You are amazing, Miguel. Thank you so very much. You are amazing, Miguel. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. Denise, thank you. Laughing Dog, thank you. Steppenwolf, thank you. Ed, thank you. You know, the great thing about Tulsi Gabbard, she flew to a city in a, in a country that was, had already descended into madness to try to, and just for YouTube algorithm, this, you can look it up. This was in what, 2017. And she did so without the knowledge of the Democratic Party. And she was very courageous. Here, you can go, you can look it up, but very courageous, okay? <clears throat> so here, here you have a woman who risked, really risked her life, okay? Tulsi Gabbard risked her life. She did what President Obama's administration should have done, and she didn't inform top Democrats. And she wanted some kind of peaceful solution. We were, President Obama's administration was fomenting civil conflict in that country. And then the, the, the party line Democrats, you want that authoritarian? You want that authoritarian? You want that authoritarian to win? It's like, oh my God. 
This is the this is the Lincoln Project Bush Cheney and Rumsfeld failed foreign policy, but with a liberal spin. Kevin, thank you. Miguel, thank you so very much. Miguel Char, thank you. Denise, thank you. Laughing Duck, thank you. Ed Steppenwolf, thank you so much. So I mean, she did this. How many women in Congress? You think AOC is doing this? You think AOC would fly there? You think AOC would fly anywhere in the world? Never. Never. Are you kidding? She won't even debate Ben Shapiro. You think she's going to fly there? <clears throat> I don't think so. AOC won't even debate Ben Shapiro for ten thousand dollars sent to her best her a charity of hers. You think she's gonna fly to a war torn country? No. And if and if Pelosi said jump, both she and Bernie Sanders would say, How high you want me to jump? I'm busting my kumquats for you. So I mean she's pretty amazing. Um, and then you get the Washington Post. No, um, oh my God, you know, this is amazing. The mystery surrounding Gabbard's trip. How about a little thank you, Washington Post? How about a, oh, this is a courageous woman. She did something amazing. No, the mystery surrounding. If AOC or like, you know, Pelosi or anyone like, if they like, if they wore something special, it'd be like the fierce, look at the fierce, look at the fierce thing they're wearing. It's fierce. But but Tulsi Gabbard risks her life. That may be the mystery. It's a mystery. Who knows? <clears throat> I mean, my God. Mad Loco, hello. So... You have a situation where actions, that's why I say it's not about trust. You know who the scorpions are. You know who the, you know, like, you don't trust. When you put a scorpion in your hand, you're not trusting it not to sting you. You know that <laughs> they're, they're going to sting you. But you you also know that you know a scorpion will eat a certain creature, or whatever. I mean, you like you understand in politics or in life in general, you judge people by their actions. So Tulsi Gabbard's her actions have been amazing, really amazing. You could tell how great Tulsi Gabbard is by the reaction from progressive slash liberal million sub YouTubers who are always so, gosh, they're so. It's so difficult sometimes for them to side with Tulsi Gabbard over the years. Oh. These people are like CNN. It goes, the, the you-know-what flows downhill from intel agencies to the Washington Post to CNN to million to four million sub-YouTubers to then progressives and socialists who think that they're, you know, protecting, you know, democracy and the, and, and the working class from Trump and his record low poverty. Trump, we had record low poverty under Trump, my God. <clears throat> then we have, I mean, and we had a great foreign policy, like an amazing, then you have MSM, Trump, Trump, Trump team takes interest in Clinton's sock drawer case. Team Trump's newest court filing referenced the so-called Clinton sock drawer, but not in a way that made any sense. I mean, how could it make any sense? It's actually pointing out hypocrisy. And so, Eddie, good night. Have a great evening. And so, in contrast, uh, here, this is hilarious. Unmentioned by Trump's defenders who began raising the issue of the sock drawer La in the is that Jackson's ruling explicitly states that the Presidential Record Act distinguishes presidential records from personal records. 
Oh, you mean classified data could be personal? Because within Clinton's sock drawer, there was classified data next to his undies, next to, next to his Spider-Man underoos. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I like to wear my Spider-Man underoos. And then I like to put top secret intel right next to, actually, the, it's top secret intel. It's like a book on tape full of top secret intelligence right next to my socks and uh, my uh, old magazines. Uh, let's just say we, we won't talk about those uh, old magazines. But I read them for the articles, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I just want you to know I read them for the articles. Am I dating myself there, huh? Anyway. Um, oh, it's, it's purely private and non-public. Yeah, right. He had classified data in his sock drawer. In contrast, Trump took highly sensitive national security secrets to his, his glorified country club. Oh, my God. To see the two as comparable is to overlook every relevant detail, except classified data in a sock drawer. Are you kidding me? Here. So. <laughs> Washington Times. Some of them classified. Lord. Here. Clinton's secrets in a sock drawer. I mean, you can't make it up, okay? You can't make it up. You can't make it up. Mm -hmm. Hold on one second. The documents that, uh, so hold on one second. Trump's, and then fact check comes in. Trump's faulty classified, uh, document claim. It's a double, sta it's a faulty double standard claim. Hold on one second, let's see. <laughs> so hold on one second. <laughs> Hold on one second. Hmm. Oh, little Ross story is vastly different. Presidential records found in Clinton's drawer. And so, let's see. One second. The Washington Times article states specifically that some of them were classified here. Lord, why, Lord, why? Are you serious? Okay, so he had classified data in his sock drawer, okay? And that's okay, apparently. And then Trump's nonsensical riff upon Pascal, I mean, what are you talking about? It's like worse. The Clinton tapes. 2009 Politico. It's vastly different. Classified recordings. <laughs> So hold on one second.
Because you can't get the, um, it's behind a, play, a paywall. So, so I'm trying to find. But Clinton did have. In addition to top secret intelligence, he did have classified data. Next to his undies. <laughs> so here, both Clintons could get away with legal matters involving documents, some of which were classified. The letter relates solely to Hillary Clinton, who destroyed 33,000 emails under federal subpoena. She also transmitted classified information through that server, along with her report. So, I mean, it's unbelievable, too. It's unbelievable. That's a town hall. But you have a situation where Bill Clinton had a sock drawer full of, and then the judge just, you know, sharing secrets in the Clinton tape. Okay. They were ultimately stored in a sock drawer. Here, this is NPR. Sharing secrets. Okay, so drawer. Let's see, classified. So where were those tapes stored? I mean, they were stored at, at least for a while in Clinton's sock drawer. These are tapes of classified information, of Bill Clinton talking about classified data. Okay? Next to the bathroom. That's where they put their servers also. They just don't care. They're using the bathroom. They have top, they have top secret intelligence flowing through servers. They don't care. And it's just you have a situation where it's not only a double standard, it's like unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Unencrypted servers as well. So, I mean, like the sock drawer issue, you had classified data in a sock drawer, okay? And that's apparently all right. Then you have classified data on servers. And that's okay, because Comey said so. Then you have 33 million documents, and that's okay. Then you have a thank you note from the FBI. They knew exactly what Trump took. and But you know what? It's really bad now. It's really... But this is what this is all about. The fear and greed index, which is kind of a hilarious index that doesn't even need to exist. Extreme fear. CNN. We're in the extreme fear uh, mode. Okay? Extreme fear. So there you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. You have, um, you have a situation where the economy is collapsing, and the fact that the the fact that a judge had to even rule um, regarding the Clinton uh, sock drawer issue, the fact that a judge even had to rule about that. CBS News, I'm reading here. Clinton's secrets in a sock drawer. Presidential records found in Clinton's drawer. And the National Archives didn't have access to his drawer. Again, it's like unbelievable. You have a situation where it's just always a sleight of hand by Democrats. Focus on this, not that.
And uh, it's just hilarious. The ruling made, uh, this is post-millennial, ruling made other sweeping declarations, including that a president's discretion on what are personal and official records is far-reaching and solely his, as is his ability to classify or destroy records at will. So, inadvertently, when they ruled, uh, when the judge actually helped Bill Clinton keep classified records in his sock drawer, that's, it was basically, it was, it was basically um, a precedent for Trump. But you see, again, these were boxes that the bureau knew about. So, I mean, you could look at precedent, and they, they, they're not going to be able to. If they ever indicted Trump, they couldn't convict him. They couldn't convict him. Because he's a former president. Ebenezer Adams! Remember Sandy Berger? Exactly. Sandy Berger is a great example. Stuffing the classified data in his pants. There you go. There you go. And so... Um, I mean, on the shorts on this channel, you can see there's classified and there's classified. President Obama exonerates Trump. Everything's vastly different. Oh, it's vastly different. Agency says ex Clinton aide took classified docs. Sandy Berger, there you go. Well, again, it's like they the. And the list of classified data floating around President Obama's administration, just into Uma Abedin's uh, computer right before 2016. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Exactly, Ebenezer Adams. Thank you, thank you, Ebenezer Adams. Thank you. Um. It's just unbelievable. It's like you look and here's the Washington Times. You can't read it, but here, that's what I was looking for the past 20 minutes here. Sorry about that. The court ruled the National Archives and Records Administration had no power to seize control of Clinton's sock drawer documents because Mr. Clinton had used his authority on the Presidential Records Act to declare the recordings part of his personal records. There you go. Those 15 boxes are part of Trump's personal records. What's the problem? What's the problem? Steppenwolf! Goodman, Goodman being here since the beginning. Thank you, Steppenwolf. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. You've been, I mean, wow, the beginning of this channel, it's like somewhat of a roller coaster in terms of, you know, like a roller coaster in terms of like, I was on way on the way on the left and, and, and now I support President Trump. Trump is not, this is the thing, it's like, he's not an extreme conservative. He's more like logical and rational about most things. Democrats think anyone who disagrees with them is extreme. On anything, by the way. It could be a, a minor disagreement. It, if you're on the left and you actually like think Trump is just okay, he's not that bad, oh my God, you're like the worst person on the planet. Steppenwolf, thank you so very much for just being here since the beginning. I appreciate that greatly. Ebenezer Adams, exactly. Exactly. All you had to do, see, this is hilarious. The way they defend the Clinton sock drawer thing is like, well, you know, the judge ruled that what Clinton had in, uh, next to his underwear was uh, his private, um, not just his private, his his personal uh, documents that he deemed personal. It's like, well, oh, okay. So Clinton could, Hillary can decide what's personal with, with uh, you know, yoga emails, and Bill can decide what's personal next to his underoos. 
But God forbid Trump has 15 boxes. Oh, my God. And it's this, basically, and I want a Hillary Trump 2024. I want to do it all over again. I think she's the best thing the Democrats have, which is hilarious. But it's so obvious. You don't even have to really know anything about politics to realize not only is there a double standard, there's this hilarious hip hypocrisy and irony. Everything they're accused of, they accuse others of. Everything. And they get away with worse. That's why they haven't indicted Trump yet. But again, they could possibly indict him just so um, <clears throat> Anthony, thank you. Just so they can indict him just to get just to say, oh, well, you know what? We gave our rabid, hysterical audience of morally superior Democrats electorate. We gave them something. While not interfering in 2024, you know. These are the same people who are like, oh, the Kremlin interfered. Let's indict Trump. For what? Uh, we're investigating. Like, you, you, you don't even need to investigate with Hunter or Hillary at, like, uh, like Joe. You already know what, what happened. You already know there's like millions and hundreds of millions going into bank accounts and going into foundations and going into uh, with shady business deals being done. And you know what's taking place. It's called graft and bribery. You know. It's not difficult. If the same thing happened, if Trump did what Hillary or Hunter or Joe or Bill did, he'd already be in prison. That's the difference. <clears throat> yeah, Trump, Trump claimed Herbert Walker. The first one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm running out of steam. I can't thank you enough, everybody. Thank you so very much. Steppenwolf, Ebenezer, everyone here. Denise, Miguel, Laughing Dog, Ed from Queens, everybody. Thank you so much. Steppenwolf, thank you so very much. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. I should have a live stream a little earlier. <clears throat> Probably around 4 or 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, but be here, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be doing live streams all month, people. I'll probably do a live stream also on H.A. Goodman's other channel this week. <laughs> uh, and the Stock Market Crash channel. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. DBK, thank you so much. And everybody here, thank you so much.